suppose we have the set of data pairs of x and f values. Note that the subscripts go from 0 to n, where n will be the largest degree of a polynomial that can be obtained by this method. We can plot these data pairs on a graph. Newton's interpolation aims at generating a polynomial curve that passes through all the given points. So, if we have an x value at any point between x0 and xn, let's call it xp for example, we can get the corresponding f value, fp. We know the general form of polynomials, including of course the interpolation polynomials. However, we're going to use an explicit form of Newton's polynomial because it's much easier to use in calculations. As you see here, the values of x are directly substituted into the polynomial. So all what we need to begin with is to calculate the constants. Let's consider the example of four data pairs of x and f and see how to construct the divided differences table step by step. The number of rows in the table should be equal to the number of data points, while the number of columns is equal to the number of rows plus one additional column at left for x values. The column 0 contains the corresponding f values from the given data set. Note that f with brackets here is not a function notation. It only refers to the corresponding x related to the current column. It will be more clear in the next steps. The divided differences are going to be calculated column by column starting from the column number 1. The empty rows are added here to help us calculate the differences more easily. We start with the first difference in column 1. As you see, the square brackets of f contain x0 and x1. In the same way, we get the next differences between f1 and f2 and between f2 and f3. The second level of differences will be in the column number 2. In the numerator, the calculation of differences of f goes in a similar way to column 1. However, in the denominator, the difference of x is between the outer values of x. So, we move diagonally up and down to pick the correct x values. Therefore, the difference is x2 minus x0. Also, in order to be sure, notice that the x difference is between the values of x having the largest and smallest subscripts in the brackets of f. The next difference is calculated exactly in the same way. Finally, the last difference in the column 3 will be between the f values from column 2 divided by the difference between x0 and x3. Now, the question is, where are the a's? Or the coefficients, the constant coefficients in the polynomial? The answer is the coefficients of polynomial are the top elements of each column in order. So, for this example, starting from column 0, we have a0, a1, a2, and a3. The table can also be organized in a compact form. So each calculated value is shifted up to the level of its upper term of x. Consequently, the values of the coefficients are now in the top row. And as a result, we can directly substitute f values or the differences from the table into the a Newton's polynomial of degree 3, as we see here. In this example, we're given five values of x and corresponding f values. Since n plus 1 is equal to 5, n will be 4, which means that the largest degree of the polynomial here will be 4. So we begin the solution by constructing the divided differences table. The first difference in column 1 will be the difference between the values corresponding to x equals to 1 and x equals to 1.3. Similarly, we continue with the next differences in column number 1. The first difference in column number 2 is between f values of the previous column. While x difference is taken from the outer values, which means we move diagonally up, so we take 1, and we move diagonally down, to take 1.6, so the difference will be 1.6 minus 1. We continue in the same way with column number 3 and the final difference in column number 4. Now we have our coefficients at the top of each column from 0 to 4. Or that can be done also uh, by using the compact form of the divided differences table. The next step is the substitution of the coefficients and the values of x from the given data set 
into the polynomial equation. At this point, I recommend to write each term in a separate line in order to avoid any mistakes due to the signs, and also it is easier to observe the repeated terms of x. If it is required, by expanding each term and simplification, we can get the general form of interpolation polynomial. Finally, we can get the value of f at x equals 1.5, either from the explicit form or from the general form of Newton's interpolation polynomial. Now, let's go back to our first symbolic example. In order to create the algorithm, we'll use the compact form of the divided differences table because it can be easily transformed to a two-dimensional array or a matrix. So, instead of this big notation of f's and x's, we use a simple matrix notation of subscripts. The values of i will represent the rows and the j's will represent the columns. Now, by using the matrix notation, we can find relationships between the position in the table and the subscripts of the divided differences at that position. So, the algorithm can be written in this form. Let's go through these symbols one by one. The first thing to notice is the outer loop of J. This loop controls the procedure of divided differences, so it goes column by column, starting from the column 1 to column N, which is 3 in this example. So, if the current column is called J, the previous column naturally will be J minus 1. Therefore, the difference will always be between the values of the previous column. The second loop will be the inner loop of i. It starts from 0, so the first row is always included, and ends at n minus j. So each column will have one difference less until it ends up with only one divided difference in the last column. In other words, this will create the triangular shape of the final table. Regardless of the column number, the row numbers in the f differences is equal to f of the next row minus f of the current row. However, for x differences in the denominator, the calculation is not the same. First, notice that the subscript of the subtracted x is always equal to the number of the current row. So it's always x sub i. And to obtain the outer x, or to move diagonally as we did in the manual calculation, we add the number of the current column, j, to the number of the current row, i, which means it becomes i plus j. So, when j is equal to 1, the difference is 1. When j equals to 2, the difference is 2, and so on. Although this procedure may look little complicated, its implementation in code is very simple and direct. Now we are ready for the second step, which is the formation of interpolation polynomial. As I mentioned at the beginning, each term of Newton's interpolation polynomial consists of the constant coefficient multiplied by x differences, except the first constant term. So the constant coefficients have already been calculated from the divided difference table. So we can easily use the matrix notation of the coefficients in order to write the algorithm in this part. So the algorithm can be simply represented by a combination of two nested procedures. The outer is the summation of the polynomial terms, where i represents the degree of each term, except the constant term which is outside the summation, while the inner is the product of the x differences which goes from j equals to 0 to i minus 1. In this way, we get a higher degree term as i increases. When i equals to n in the last term of the polynomial, the highest degree will be to the power n. Now, let's write the Python code then uh, plot the polynomial. First, we import NumPy package. Next, we define data as two NumPy arrays. Note, I've used Y here since I'm going to use the letter F for the divided differences table. N is the degree of the polynomial. In this line, I initially define F as a square matrix of zeros. You can also define it as an empty matrix. However, NumPy's empty function can fill the array with random numbers, which could be confusing when printed. In this step, the column 0 is filled with the f or y values from the table. Now we start the divided differences procedure with two nested loops, i and j. 
Note here that we have to add 1 to n in the range, since Python loop always stops one step before the end value. You need to keep this in mind. Now we write the divided differences calculation formula exactly as we wrote it in the algorithm. You can pause the video here and check the subscripts. Before going to the substitution step, let's print the table here and compare it to the manually calculated. The next step is to substitute the coefficients and the given x value, xp, in the polynomial. Let's use the coefficients of the constant term as an initial value. Then we start the outer loop of summation. Since we calculate products at each term, we need to initialize the product variables x prod with the multiplicative identity value 1. The second loop calculates the product. Note that 0 is the default start value for range. After product calculation, we move back to the outer loop of summation and write the summation line. Finally, let's make a formatted print for the final result. Now, before plotting the polynomial, let's rewrite the substitution loop by using the inline for loops. And you will see how we will reduce the size of the code from multiple lines to only one line. Here, instead of summation and product by using increment assignment signs, we use NumPy's sum and prod or product functions. And we control their arguments by using two inline for loops. Let's check the result. Now, let's add a small procedure to plot the polynomial and the interpolated points uh, of xp and yp. First, we generate linearly spaced points to plot a smooth polynomial curve. The default of linspace function is 50, but I use 100 here for more accuracy. Don't use too many points, since that will make the plotting process too slow. Here, I use minimum and maximum values for x to make the code more general. I define y as an empty array with size 0. Now we loop through the all new points of x capital array and apply the interpolation polynomial to find the y array. Each calculated value is appended to the y array, so by the end of the loop, the array will contain the all y elements corresponding to the x capital elements. Now we are ready to plot the polynomial. First, we go back to the top of the code and import the pyplot module from matplotlib. We can plot all points using a single plot function, so the polynomial curve will be a blue continuous line, the data points of x and y, red circles, and the interpolated point will be shown as a green square. Before plotting, let's also add the x and y labels and display the grid. 